Okay, so this is uh, unit two and we're going to have a look at all the numbers that, that are based around unit two and central to all of this, this is an income statement on here, sales, revenue, minus variable cost, gross profit, minus fixed cost is equal to your profit. So we must have that implicitly in our heads at all times. And then we've got profitability, the four ways we can increase profit, which is you can reduce your fixed costs, you can reduce your variable costs, you can raise your selling, you can raise your selling price, or you can try and increase your sales revenue, all of those different ways, different ways of raising profits. <clears throat> Three different profitability ratios, gross profit margin, net profit margin, which is just gross profit divided by sales revenue times 100, net profit margin is net profit divided by sales revenue times 100, and ultimately you're trying to increase your return on gap employed, which is the primary figure which suggests how well your business is doing. We also want to look at cash flow down here, cash short term, profit long term, because if you haven't got enough cash and the business is going to go under at any time, uh, but ultimately of course we always want to make profit in the long term, because you make profit, you make profit, then you can make money, and then you can reinvest in the business, if you can reinvest in the business, then the business is going to do better. So you need to get both things in place from here. So here we've done three numbers already, uh, gross profit margin, net profit margin, return on capital employed. Then we get to operations management. If we operate a policy of total quality management, we produce greater quality in our product, then that is going to lead to higher prices. Uh, you may be able to reduce the price of elasticity of demand. Hopefully as a business you can produce a a uh, an inelastic demand curve, you can just inelastic demand curve, then you can raise price. If you raise price with an inelastic demand curve, total revenue will go up because the percentage change in quantity demanded will be less than the rise in price. So that's a pretty important indicator to get hold of. Also, capacity utilization, which is one of the operational targets. If you can increase your capacity utilization, that will reduce the that will reduce the fixed cost per unit. If you can do that, of course then that will lower your fixed costs, that will help to increase profits. You might want to change suppliers because maybe you can reduce your variable costs, you can reduce your variable costs, once again that will lead to higher profits and therefore higher return on capital employed. Higher productivity in the firm, which is output divided by input. If you can reduce your unit cost, which is total cost divided by output. So we've got all of those things on there, seven numbers. We've got the price elasticity of demand again, perhaps the firm should move into a niche market. Into a niche market, you can probably charge higher prices. And also lastly, we looked at HRM with productivity and labor turnover. If you can increase the labor productivity, then obviously your costs are going to fall once again, which is going to increase your profits, which will therefore help to increase your return on capital employed. If we remember what that is, return on capital employed is net profit divided by capital invested times 100 over one. And we want to try and increase that figure because it shows how well you are using the money that has been invested in your business. And so if you're getting 10%, well, that's way, way higher than you get from a bank. So clearly the business is doing okay. Labor turnover, you want to try and reduce that because if you can reduce that, that will reduce uh, your recruitment costs. And if you get the right labor in, your, your firm's going to be more effective. Good recruitment policies, hopefully that will therefore raise productivity and that will that will help to reduce costs as well. Okay, so we've got all of that, all of that's going around in our head at the same time. You must understand profit and cash and the difference between the two. Uh, when you first up in business, you've got to spend lots of money on fixed assets. And when you spend your money on fixed assets, you still have those at the end of the year. So that does not come off your income statements. Well, it does actually in a very minor way a little bit of depreciation will set in here, but we don't need to worry about that on this particular unit. Depreciation because if you have a coffee machine, it's going to cost you £5,000 to buy. It's not going to last you forever and ever and ever, and maybe it loses £500 per year in terms of what it's worth, if it's going to last for 10 years, say. Okay, so we move into the exam, we move on to a question. Now, this is a question on here. You're faced with all these numbers on here. The first one is you're faced with these numbers, sales, revenue, 46,200. All these are the various costs on here, and they say work out the net profit margin. Well, hopefully you would see that that is related to profit, okay? But then students will always say to me, but sir, you always told me it was sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost. Is it, sorry, sales minus variable cost minus is equal to gross profit minus your fixed cost is equal to the profit. Yes, I did. However, 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 they just haven't put the gross profit on here and they split up the cost into different sections. But basically you would see that, you would add up all those figures, subtract it from that, and we would get 1,155. 
We then divide that by the sales revenue figure and that will come out as 2.5%. So you get 2.5%. So what can we tell from this little bit here? Well, we can tell quite a lot. We can tell the net profit margin every year is falling and this is not good news for the firm. Maybe it's not controlling its fixed costs. Maybe its sales revenue is falling. But if we look at here, its sales revenue has gone up and its profit is falling. Now that may suggest therefore that their fixed costs are rising. They're not controlling their costs particularly well. The capacity utilization is also going up, which would suggest they should have lower fixed costs per unit. So something within the firm is going wrong. However, at the same time, the unit costs are also going up. I think also on this question, it said the customer satisfaction is also, is also falling. So we can combine data here, which is saying, OK, the profit margin is falling. It shouldn't be according to capacity utilization because it's going up. But maybe they're not controlling their other fixed costs. Maybe they're not controlling their variable costs particularly well or some other costs. So this is actually going up and this is a sign the firm is not as efficient as, as it could be. OK, so the next thing it says that customer service has fallen. Why has this happened? Well, it may have fallen because your capacity utilization is now too high, so therefore quality may have gone down and this may be upsetting, upsetting the customers. We can't tell anything else from here. The next question says, well, should you be using a subcontractor? Well, yes, maybe you should be because capacity utilization is, is becoming quite high, but also, in effect, your unit costs are going up. And this is not a good sign because if your costs go up, then you're going to be making less profit. So we've got two reasons from here about why you may want to use a subcontractor. And lastly, they're saying which is more important, cash or profit? Well, once again on here, we can quote the profit figures on here, that they're falling, and if they continue to fall, then the firm is going to find it very hard to raise money in the future. However, the firm has to survive in the short term, and there'll be reasons why the firm needs to maybe bring some money in, because you kind of got enough cash in the short term, then you're going to go out as well. So really, a lot of these concepts from here will come into all of these questions on here. And I would suggest, really, There'll be five marks on that one, five marks on that one if you use the numbers correctly, another four marks here if you use the numbers, and probably another five marks here, so 10, 14, almost 19. The whole paper's only out of 40. 19, almost 20, almost 50% of the marks are for using that data correctly on the paper. So... 27 is going to get you a grade A, so you need eight more marks on the paper to walk away with a, with, a, with a good grade. So if you can get the numbers right on these units, it will really help. So how many numbers have we used? Well, we've used, on this paper, we've used net profit margin, number one. Uh, unit costs have also appeared. The concept of capacity utilisation has also appeared. So we've got three of the nine things, three of the nine ideas on there, as well, of course, profit as well. Okay, so that's unit two as a whole. Thank you.